Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. We're on day six. Today we're looking at nouns in the nominative case. So uh, I mentioned already that Russian is a heavily inflected language, meaning it has a number of different cases. And those cases each have their own uh, set of endings. And those endings tell us uh, what case a word is and in turn what role it's playing in a sentence. So this is one thing that makes Russian quite difficult, right? Because we have to learn how to change all these endings depending on what a word is doing in, a, in whatever sentence. Uh, so uh, before we get to that, uh, let's start by looking a bit more at just simple greetings. And uh, before that, let's look at our first Russian uh, Soviet propaganda poster, uh, which begins with the uh, pronoun ты, ты, right? And the soldier is pointing at us and saying ты, which is the informal you. We mentioned yesterday that uh, in Russian, whenever you're speaking to anyone, you have to choose between being formal, formal and being informal. And the pronouns that correspond to that, the pronouns for you, are ты, which is informal you, you singular, and v, which is formal you. Uh, the, this form v can be either formal, a formal ver version of you speaking to one person, or it can be used to speak to multiple people, whether formal or informal. Right, so we'll be talking a lot about this T V distinction. And here in this poster, the uh, soldier is being rather curt, right? Presumably he doesn't really know us, but he's asking very directly and somewhat somewhat bluntly and uh, almost impolitely, right? T, hey you, that kind of uh, accusatory, uh, brusque tone, right? T, zapisalsi dobravolsum, right? Have you signed up as a volunteer? Okay, so let's look at some, uh, again, some basic greetings, and we've been over this already. But uh, let's look at this form for hello. The form we've learned so far, Zdrastvitsya, is actually a V form. It's a polite way to say hello. And it's marked by this ending, Tsya, that this, this word is actually a command. It's an imperative, which means be healthy. And imperatives, as we'll learn later in this book, uh, come in two forms. You can have a T imperative, which you would use uh, to give informal commands, or if you're purposefully being rude or something like this. Or uh, you can give a formal command by adding tsia to the informal version. So uh, compare these two forms, zdrastvitsya, that's formal, meaning, hey you, polite, be healthy, zdrastvitsya. And the informal version without the tsia is simply zdrastvui, zdrastvui. Okay, so we'll talk a lot more about this later. For now, let's just practice again these two phrases. Repeat. Повторите, пожалуйста. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. And informal, the T version of this expression. Здравствуй. Здравствуй. Now, the basic Russian for goodbye, uh, which means literally until we see each other again, it's not affected by this, so we don't have to worry. We can simply say, до свидания, до свидания, до свидания. Okay, some other, some informal uh, phrases you can use when greeting or saying goodbye. So we would only use the, these normally with T, right? That is, when we are speaking to someone who's like a friend or someone we can safely be informal with, we can say things like, Privet, privet, like English hi. Zdarova, zdarova, which literally means something like healthy. Again, that's kind of an informal way to say, hey, good to see you, that type of thing. If you're saying goodbye, you could say paka, paka. That's the most common way of saying goodbye informally. And you may also hear shisliva. Shisliva, uh, which means something like happily, if we're translating literally, and means something like take care of yourself, take it easy, that type of thing. Okay, we'll practice this later in a dialogue, but uh, uh, when you're speaking with Russians you don't know, you should always default to V, right? You should use V expressions. You should address them using the pronoun V uh, until they recommend switching to T. 
Now, again, this is a very, rather complicated topic we'll talk more about later. If you were at a party or something amidst people of your own age, other students and that type of thing, then you would probably go ahead and use T. Uh, but again, by default, especially as a foreigner, you should probably err on the side of being polite. And so the way a Russian would propose switching over to T would be That means literally, let us cross over onto T. Let's transition to T. And to, you can respond to that by saying, And note how already we've switched from which is the V form for let's, to the T form, right? We've gotten rid of that tie that's marking commands as polite commands. Okay, so again, there's a lot of grammar here we don't really understand yet. We're just kind of learning some set phrases for now, and we'll understand what's really going on later. Let's just practice our pronunciation and hear a few just common, day, uh, common everyday expressions, some of which we've seen already. Повторите, пожалуйста, repeat. Пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. Спасибо. Спасибо. Извините. Now, as you might guess, that's the V version for what is actually a command, right? Excuse. Excuse me. Извините. Uh, that's what you'd say to a stranger or to someone you're being polite with. Or to a classmate or something. Извини. Извини. That's the T version of that command. So let's practice one more time. Извините. Извини. Uh, how do you say what in Russian? Well, you can't say что, but that may sound a little bit blunt sometimes. Uh, so maybe a polite way to do that would be как вы сказали, как вы сказали, and note the v in there. That's making clear that we're being polite. Как вы сказали. Okay, you're going to hear this a lot in class, it's like you did just now. Повторите, пожалуйста. Повторите, пожалуйста. Okay, we see the те, повторите, repeat. That's a formal command, a v a V imperative. Now, again, this is a good example. This could mean repeat to one person when you're being polite, or it can be just speaking to multiple people, whether polite or impolite. Um, so uh, you could tell uh, multiple friends, for example, multiple T's, so to speak. Hey, you guys, повторите, right? Repeat. Okay, some other useful phrases for greetings. Dobre utra means good morning. And that's a neuter expression. We're going to learn more about that today. Utra is a neuter noun. And look at how the adjective matches up with it. Dobre utra. Good day is dobre dien. Dobre dien. And good evening, dobre vecher. And we see that dien and vecher are both masculine. And so our adjective is dobre. Okay, a couple of other phrases. Мне надо идти. Мне надо идти. Literally, for me, necessary to go. Right, I've got to go. Мне надо идти. And finally, до завтра. До завтра. Literally, until tomorrow. Okay, let's now look more formally at gender. We mentioned this the other day, but uh, it's very important to note that a Russian has grammatical gender for all nouns. So all nouns, whether they refer to people or animals or just objects, uh, everything is a he, she, or an it in terms of grammatical gender. And uh, the good news, actually very good news in Russian is that we can almost always tell a word's gender by simply looking at its nominative form. And if you study other languages like uh, French or German, that's not always the case, right? And that that's a major difficulty in those languages. In Russian, for the most part, we're very lucky. Uh, so let's look over, and uh, as we're doing so, uh, let's repeat the words, get more pronunciation practice, and look at how we're spotting the grammatical gender of the nouns in this chapter's vocabulary. 
Let's look first at hard nouns. Again, this hard, soft distinction is very important. We should know what that means by now. Uh, let's look at the masculine column, and we see that masculine nouns have zero ending. They have no ending. Or maybe a slightly less accurate way to think of that is that they end in a consonant. Right, so they have a final consonant with no additional ending tacked onto it. And if we look down the list, we see that, of course, these are all hard consonants because there's no soft sign to mark them as soft. So these are all hard masculine nouns. So, potarich pajalsta, repeat, and as we're doing so, just think carefully about how we're able to classify these as hard masculine nouns. Potarichie, stol, stool, velocipied, telefon, computer, televisor, plakat, Grandash Rugzak Kavior Miach Kluch Vietir Zont Serial Film Journal Вопрос. Ответ. Кошелек. Okay, let's go to hard feminines. And we look down the column, we see they all end in a. Uh, no, not ya, but a, right? So no soft vowel here to indicate that the ending is soft. We have hard a's all up and down the line, and that allows us to spot these as feminine nouns, hard feminine nouns. Повторите, пожалуйста. Книга. Комната. Одежда. Работа. Картина. Футболка. Этажерка. Машина. Передача, ошибка, страница, газета, сумка, тема, проблема, задача, ручка. Лампа, рубашка, бумага. And finally, neuters, uh, we look up and down, we see the ending is о for hard neuters. Again, let's think о, not ё, right? A ё or a е, for that matter, could mark a soft neuter, but here we, we don't have a soft vowel in these endings. We have a hard, so to speak, vowel, о. These are hard neuter nouns. Повторите, пожалуйста. Дело. Окно. Место. Зеркало. Кресло. Письмо. Одеяло. Мыло. Утро. Okay, let's transition to soft nouns. Again, same thing, and you see how this, this basic schema is so important, but ultimately quite simple. We've got grammatical gender, masculine, feminine, neuter, and then we've got hard and soft versions of each uh, gender and each ending that we've seen. It's important to note uh, that, you know, these soft endings, it's not like there's some crazy ending uh, that we have to learn separately. It's just the soft version of whatever we have in the hard ending. And so we have sort of hard and soft versions of exactly the same ending. That's very important to notice going forward because it saves us a lot of energy as long as we take care to see exactly what's going on. 
So if we look at masculines, for example, the first thing you notice, by the way, is that there are much fewer uh, soft nouns than hard nouns. Uh, but if we look at the soft masculines, we see all of these end in a consonant, right? Like any masculine noun, they have no ending. Uh, or again, we could say they end in a consonant. And here we have either a, a soft sign marking that softness, or we have some masculine nouns that are soft ending in ikratkaya. So, повторите, пожалуйста. Шампунь. Словарь. День, музей. Soft feminines and then ya, which is quite logical, right? Instead of a, we have ya. That ya is marking any preceding consonant as soft, and it's showing us that these are soft feminine nouns. Patarich pajalsta. Idea, nidelia, prastinya. Statsya, again, that one is tricky. Statsya, right? Practice spacing it out. Uh, and again, note that that soft sign is not uh, superfluous. There's a reason it's being written there. Statsya. Finally, family. Simya. Simya. Neuters can end in ye or yo. Right, so your is of course just the soft version of or, right? Uh, so your can mark a soft neuter or yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure I've mentioned yet that your, that letter can only occur in a stressed position. Uh, so if you see a your anywhere in Russian, remember in normal Russian text, it wouldn't even be indicated. You wouldn't have the two dots above it, but that sound can only occur in a stressed syllable. Uh, that sound uh, cropped up in Russian his fairly late in the development of Russian, and so it's kind of a peculiar little thing uh, that helps explain why it doesn't really have its own letter per se. Uh, so that's kind of a different story, but suffice it to say it's kind of a funny uh, thing. But remember, in this textbook, we're going to always try to mark, we're going to write the double dots, hopefully, uh, and so anyway, повторить, пожалуйста. Платье, платье, again, that difficult combination. Платье, полотенце, белье, имя. Remember, имя is very peculiar for now. We'll learn more about that type of noun later, but it is neuter. Okay, finally, we have a few nouns. Uh, there are actually a lot of these, uh, but for now we're just getting a, a sampling of it. Nouns we'll call special soft nouns. Now look over these examples and you'll see that based on what we've said so far, there's nothing weird about these, right? We have one soft masculine noun ending in ikratka. We have some soft feminines in ya, and we have soft neuters in ya, right? So nothing new here really. The only reason we're grouping these separately is that later they're going to behave uh, in, oddly in just a couple of examples. And so we, we won't really see why we're labeling these as special soft nouns until later. So for now, let's just note the obvious that they are soft. Uh, that's no mystery. We can tell just by looking at them. And uh, we'll save the, the rest for later. Okay, повторить, пожалуйста. Кафетерий. Soft feminine, familia, fotografia, historia, neuter, respisania, uprajnenia, zadania. Now you can see that the, the, the special nouns, special soft nouns are quite easy to spot. They have this E in front of that ending. So E, E, Kratke for masculine special softs, E, Ya for special soft feminines, and E, Ya for special soft neuters. So these are very easy to spot. Uh, we'll talk more about them later. There are very few masculine special softs, but there are tons and tons and tons of special soft feminines and special soft neuters, and we'll learn why that is uh, later in the course. Okay, so let's do an exercise here and talk about pronouns. So the three pronouns in Russian, 
uh, well, for nominative singular, are on, ana, anoa. And you can probably guess which one is which, right? On uh, would refer to something that's grammatically uh, masculine, right? It could be a person, an animal, or a thing. Uh, so note, this is quite important that we would translate, we could translate on into English as he, if we're talking about a person, uh, but Russians say he about anything that's grammatically masculine. So on can refer to anything, even an object, as long as it's grammatically masculine. The feminine version is ana. Again, that literally would mean she, but it may translate as it into English if we're using it to refer to something, some object that's uh, that happens to be grammatically feminine. And finally, the neuter version is anoa, that would always translate as it and would refer to something that's grammatically neuter. Okay, so let's do a quick exercise. This is pretty easy today. Uh, let's just pick the right pronoun we would use to refer to these objects. Uh, so we're basically just guessing the gender of the noun. So uh, take telefon. Okay, that's grammatically masculine. So if we wanted to use a pronoun to refer to that and say, hey, that's a nice telephone. It is pretty or whatever, right? We would, for it, we would use on, on, where we've got to pick something masculine. Okay, uh, slavar, soft masculine, that's going to be on, on. Aknoa, neuter, anoa, anoa. Rabota, work, that's grammatically feminine, so if we wanted to say, talk about the about work using a pronoun, that would be ana, ana, literally she. Shampoon, soft masculine, on. Idea, okay, try to guess now yourself. Ana, platia, anoa. Film, on, atviet, on, zirkala, ano, zadanie, ano, historia, ana, plakat, on, machina, ana, miach, on, musie, on. Okay, let's uh, look at another little bit of simple grammar, the pointing word at. We're going to talk a lot about this uh, in the coming lessons, but for now, it's quite simple. At is a word that basically conveys a pointing gesture. So we're simply pointing at something and saying, uh, what is this, for example, or what's that? Well, this is a pen, or that's a pen, right? Sort of this or that, pointing at something, that's going to be eta in Russian. Let's look at a few very simple examples. And uh, we're going to talk quite a bit about how uh, looking at translations can often be surprisingly confusing. So although we do use translations, uh, you know, in the textbook for obvious reasons, if you pay too much attention to them, you can get very confused very quickly. And uh, we see some good examples here. First of all, uh, we'll see eventually that eta, the pointing word, can translate as this or that, right? It depends on in English whether we're pointing to something that's right close to us or something a bit far away, right? So at that can translate as this or that, and sometimes it may even translate as it, right? So we have to really uh, be on guard about translations because, it, because, of course, it in Russian could also be conveyed using a pronoun, as we just learned, right? On, ana, anoa, those can also mean he, she, or it, uh, and so forth, right? So just be on, on guard uh, and really focus on the Russian and make sure you understand what the Russian is doing. Again, wherever you see this word atta, just imagine pointing, right? Imagine that pointing gesture. 
Okay, so let's look at some examples. Stoeta. Stoeta. What is this? And we're pointing at something. Eteruchka. Eteruchka. Right? This thing we're pointing out is a pen. Etana. Okay, so note that when we say this is it, again, just some very simple sentences, we're pointing to it and we're substituting a pronoun for the noun, but we're maintaining the gender. So whenever we're pointing at something or talking about something, describing something in Russian, we have to reflect that something's grammatical gender, in this case, feminine. Okay, so let's say some more simple things now, working in an adjective. Ananovaya. Ananovaya. It is new, or literally, she is new. She knew, actually, there's no linking verb there. She knew, right? A uh, feminine. Ruchka novaya. The pen is new. At the novaya ruchka, this is a new pen. Uh, so you see the arrows pointing to the agreement, how the adjectives and pronouns are all agreeing with the noun we're talking about, which is ruchka. Let's look at a neuter example. A stoeta, right? We're following up, hey, what about this? What's this? Or what's that? Pointing at it. At the zirkala, it's a mirror. This is a mirror. That is a mirror, right? That sentence can be translate any in any of those ways in English. Okay, now zirkala, zirkala, this thing we're talking about is grammatically neuter. So everything we say about it has got to be neuter. At the anua, anua novaya. Zirkala novaya. Eta novaya zirkala. Finally, let's look at a masculine example. Ashto eta. Well, what's this? Or what's that? Eta zoant. This is an umbrella. That's an umbrella. It's an umbrella. Eta on. On novi. Zoant novi. Eta novi zoant. Okay, another quick exercise. Now again, we are asking, we're pointing at something, we're asking about it, we're pointing out what it is, and then we're saying it is whatever, right? And so it, the pronoun, we're choosing between basically he, she, and it in Russian, even though we're talking about objects here. And then any adjective we add is also going to agree with the whatever we're talking about, right? And we're going to talk more about those endings later, but today we're just kind of seeing them and um, repeating them. Okay, so uh, by the way, as I'm doing these exercises, I'll start uh, calling out the names of the numbers in Russian. We haven't learned the numbers yet, but it's one of those things, if you hear it enough, you'll start to pick up on it. Uh, so, один, number one. Что это? Это карандаш. Он новый. It is new. At the novi karandash. Right, this is, or that is, or it's a new computer. And again, you see how the English translation can vary uh, in terms of how we convey what this pointing word is doing. Dva, number two. Что это? Это музей. Он интересный. Это интересный музей. Three, three. Что это? Это платье. Оно новое. Это новое платье. Четыре. Four. Что это? Это расписание. A schedule. Оно интересное. Это интересное расписание. Пять. Five. Что это? Это стул. Он старый. Это старый стул. Шесть. Что это? Это кресло. So a stool is just an ordinary chair. A кресло is like an armchair or an easy chair. Это кресло. Оно старое. Это старое кресло. Семь. Seven. Что это? Это мяч. Он новый. Это новый мяч, a new ball. Восемь. Что это? Это книга. Она новая. Это новая книга. Okay, we have one more thing to cover today. 
uh, a basic way to express possession. And this is our first real Russian idiom, meaning again, a kind of a, a, a way of expressing a, a very simple idea, in this case, possession, that may be quite unfamiliar. So we've got to kind of rewire our brains a little bit. And again, so often in cases like this, the Russian isn't really difficult at all. It's a very simple expression, as long as we don't let the English confuse us. So the English idiom for possession is basically I have, right? It starts with a subject and a verb and then a direct object. In Russian, the idiom is at me is blank. At me is blank. And that blank is going to be the subject of the sentence, right? A book is at me. At me is book. That book or whatever it is is going to be the subject. And for that reason, we'll use the nominative case in Russian, the same case forms we've been learning today. Uh, let's look at a, a poster quickly. Uh, this is a, there are several posters like this where they compare life in uh, the capitalist West, especially America, with uh, life in the Soviet uh, Union. And they say, Unich, literally at them, Unich, bezpravie, bezrabotitsa, nishta. Meaning, bezpravie is a little bit hard to translate. It means something like you don't have rights. Uh, basically, bezpravie, uh, bezrabotitsa means unemployment, right, a lack of work, and nishita, which means poverty. Unas, right, at us, literally, meaning here, you know, where we live in the Soviet Union, unas, ravnapravie, svoboda, blagopoluchie. We have equal rights, ravnapravie, svoboda, freedom, and blagopoluchie. By the way, you notice that two of these, uh, well, three of them actually, bespravie, ravnapravie, and blagopoluchie, those are all special soft neuters. Okay, so you see that the, this expression in Russian is quite easy. We use u, which means at, followed by what's actually the genitive form of the pronouns we've learned. So this is our first, uh, we've learned the nominative case, but now we're actually seeing some genitives thrown in here. We're going to talk more about the genitive case next uh, chapter, but for now we're just getting these very simple expressions which involve the genitive form of the pronouns. So at me is umenya, at you, ti, right, informal, utibya, at him is univo, now look at the g, right, the g there is pronounced v, univo, at her is uniyo, and at it is univo. At not at us unas. At you vui right the vui form of you could be polite singular or simply you plural. Uvas, and at them unich, unich. So for example, u tibia is kniga. At you is book. У тебя есть книга? Да, у меня есть книга. Yes, at me is book. Uh, here we are including a linking verb есть because we're we're emphasizing here the existence of the thing. We're going to talk more about that later. У вас есть зонт? At you is an umbrella. Here we're being polite, or actually plural, we're, uh, because of what follows. It's clear we're speaking to more than one person, so we're using вы. And the answer is, da unas yes zont. Yes, at us is umbrella. Uh, okay, so again, let's get back to this question of do we include a linking verb yes in Russian or not? Only when we're emphasizing it, uh, which we are doing if we're stating that yes, I, there is a book at me, right? There we're kind of emphasizing the is. And so we do include the Russian verb yes. У тебя есть книга? Да, есть. Okay, now look at the second sentence there. Now that we've established that the thing exists, right, it, it, it is at us, we tend to uh, omit the linking uh, verb, right? So, literally, it knew, it knew. The emphasis there is on the fact that it's new, not on its existence or something like that. Russian, in cases like that, typically drops or omits a linking verb, right? The linking verb is understood, Right, so uh, again, a kind of a follow-up question or a different question. Книга у тебя новая? 
Okay, they were not asking, do you have a book or not? We're simply pointing at a book or whatever. And we're saying, book at you, new, right? So again, we omit the linking verb, the yest. Da, novoya, yes, new, right? So no linking verb. Uh, let's practice a few of these responses. U kavo yest televizor, right? We're asking, at whom is a television? Right, so kavo is the genitive form of kto, which means who. U kavo yest televizor. U nivo yest televizor. Right, at him is television. Dva, two. U kavo yest tele. Sorry, u kavo yest telefon. Let's say she has a, a telephone. U nivo yest telefon. At her is telephone. Three. U kavo yest machina. Who has a car. У них есть машина. They have a car. Четыре. У кого есть зонт? У тебя есть зонт. You have an umbrella. Пять. Five. У кого есть окно? Who has a window? Let's use вы, right? So this could be you, formal or multiple yous. У вас есть окно? Шесть. У кого есть идея? Who has an idea? У нас есть идея. We have an idea. Okay, quickly, you may have noticed that Russian has no articles, right? Uh, so articles in English could be the indefinite article like a or an, the definite article the. Uh, of course, in some instances, uh, English doesn't use articles at all. And that can be very difficult to explain to a Russian, right? Uh, just in the, you know, just as Russian grammar can be often very confusing to us because it has certain features that English lacks. Uh, Russian, since it lacks articles, Russians have a very hard time uh, learning how to use English articles properly. And uh, you may have never realized how difficult a topic that is until you try to explain it to Russian. So even as a native speaker of English, you may actually not really understand articles in a kind of theoretical way. You just do it intuitively. Okay, so look at, for example, у тебя есть книга? Okay, they were asking, does the person have a book or not? And we don't know whether or not the book even exists. So we use this indefinite thing, a book. But if we, we've we established that there is a book and we go on to say other things about this book, right? We use a definite article and we say things like, книгу тебя есть, right? Do you have the book? Do you have the book? So, uh, Keep in mind, Russian has no articles. You don't have to translate articles if you're going from English to Russian. Just forget about articles altogether. Uh, how do you negate in Russian? Well, the simplest way is with nie, right? So we'll be seeing that very simple. At the computer, on novy, it's not new, right? So we can negate adjectives using nie, on stary i obyčny. At the karandash, this isn't a uh, pencil, right here we're negating uh, the noun with nie. At the ruchka, it's a pen. Ana ochin nie It's very unusual. Okay, last thing today quickly is uh, just looking at uh, asking how, how people are doing. So we're going to practice this more very soon. Uh, the way we do that in Russian is to say, how at you things? You know, how are your things going? How is your business going? Uh, how are things going? Kaku vas dila. Kaku vas dila. That's the v, that's the polite version. Uh, the t version, the informal version would be kaku tibia dila. So if you see a friend, you would say, how at you things? Kaku tibia dila. Or even more simply, kak dila. Как дела? How things? Here are some simple responses. У меня все хорошо. At me, everything good. Uh, or you can simply say хорошо. Again, we're going to practice this later. You can say things like все отлично, everything great. Or answer with just simple adverbs. Хорошо, отлично, плохо, everything's bad. Or, sorry, things are bad, плохо. Normalna, that means that's sort of non-committal, right? Eh, things are okay, nothing special, nothing to write home about. Normalna. 
Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. Some fairly simple grammar, and uh, we'll build on that tomorrow on day seven. Until then, desvidanya tavarishi. Mm-hmm.